Hey everyone, welcome to our uh, first house renovation, a uh, new channel here, um, based in Ireland. Uh, my name is Daniel and uh, I'm going to be giving you a little bit of a tour. Um, the reason we decided to set this uh, channel up is to really document the um, house renovation for ourselves, but also to get your feedback and your ideas and your input on what might be good, what might be bad um, from different parts of the industry. Um, and then obviously to, to just go through step by step what happens in a full house renovation. So we're gonna take a quick tour of the house and the auxiliary building we have, as well as the land. You can see this is just one section of it with my car behind. Um, so it's quite a substantial size and I'll explain to you exactly what we're going to be doing with it. Um, just for a bit of context, there is myself and my wife and we have a little boy. So we're going to be moving out of Dublin into this uh, house and we're about 35 minutes outside of Dublin here on the Curra. Um, so for anybody outside of Ireland, um, the Curra is a small little area outside of Dublin um, that's famous for horse racing. So it's a lovely, lovely land, really nice area, very, very quiet. You can literally hear nothing. It's great. It's so quiet. It's much better than Dublin. Um, so we're getting out of the hustle and bustle. We've lived in Dublin since, uh, well, I've been there since 2008. My wife's been there all of her life, but we've lived together in a house there since 2012, which we bought in 2012. Um, so we decided to make the move out of Dublin. So a bit more space for the kids to grow up. We also have another one on the way. Um, so that's gonna be in January. So we're trying to get this place done or mostly done by January so we can move in with the new baby. Um, so yeah, so let's uh, have a quick tour. Um, like to get your ideas, get your feedback, so comment below um, and like and subscribe to our page. So here we are at the entrance. So as you can see, it's a pretty standard 1980s bungalow um, with a little garage, two port garage on the side, which was extended over some time. You can see I've done a little bit of work pulling out some trees and that. Some nice gates on the front there, we'll get all that renovated. You can see there's a lot of land out the front here as well. It's all pretty overgrown, but we're getting that slowly cleaned up. And just for a bit of context, so we're doing a lot of this on our own. So um, I've just been here on my own um, probably for the last six or seven weeks, mainly evenings and weekends, um, just trying to get things done. Um, my wife's father is going to be coming on board. He's a builder, so he'll be starting in a few weeks' time to do some extension work, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, but as you can see, we've started to kind of pull out some trees and different things like that. Now, the house was built in 81 um, and it hasn't been lived in for about two to three years. So the last tenants left the place in a pretty shoddy state. Um, it hasn't been upgraded or had any work done to it probably in the last 12 to 15 years. So you can just imagine what it's, what it's like. Um, so this is the entrance. So as you can see, there's a red brick facade on it that actually ran inside. Uh, to the hallway as well, so that's been removed. That's all going to go, um, so we'll take all of that out. Um, but as you can see, it's quite a sturdy house. It's all solid block inside, um, all the walls, so it's very, very sturdy. So we're going to go through the entrance now. So this is the hallway. So as you can see, there was a red brick wall right there. We'll just close the door. And that has been removed. So that is completely gone. That was me for about two hours with Kango Hammer taking all of it out. As you can see, it kind of runs already kind of out to the front of the house and then continues around for the facade. And then as you can see here, we've got a little bit of red brick there. And then obviously that is where the window is tied into. So the plan in this area is to really keep it as open plan as possible. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take all of that out of the front, take all the red brick off and extend the porch area out uh, approximately a meter or so. And this is about two meters wide. So we're gonna have a two by one extension out the front with a little A roof, just to kind of take the uh, linear style of the front of the bungalow off, uh, that kind of look. Um, and then we're going to basically have a really nice door with some glass either side, a much wider door than was already here. And then all this section here that already has the glass, we're gonna make that a full glass window extending all the way from this wall all the way out. So it's gonna bring a lot of light in and we're gonna try and go a little bit higher than the wall area here. Um, so we've got quite high ceilings as well. Well, there used to be ceilings, there's not anymore, they're all gone. Um, so we're gonna obviously try and uh, make this place really bright and airy um, in what we're gonna do. So just give you a tour of the actual house 
as is, as you can see, the doorways are right up to the top. So it's all solid block walls. So all the internal walls are completely and utterly solid. So we need to work around that. It's a blessing and a curse. So it's a blessing because it's a very, very solid house. It's not gonna fall down. It's not, it doesn't have any stud walls. Um, but you know, if you wanna change the interior layout, it makes it a little bit more difficult because you have to take down solid walls. You have to look at if they're low bearing, that sort of thing. So we're gonna come into the formal sitting room here. So this is the front sitting room. Um, so quite a large window there. As you can see, the fireplace has been pulled out, pulled that out a couple of weeks ago. And um, there's actually a chimney area here. Now, the chimney doesn't protrude into the room. It's actually on the exterior of the house. We'll see that a little bit later on when we do a walk around outside. But we're actually gonna take that out. Um, so that's gonna be completely sealed up because we're going for as close to a passive rating on this house as possible. So that basically means that we wanna do uh, air recovery uh, on the house um, so that it is uh, very, very energy efficient. Solar panels also, um, very good insulation inside and out. So we can't have any air leaks. We wanna make it as airtight as possible. They're very, very difficult to do with an existing house. A lot of new houses will be deemed as airtight because they're designed from the ground up to be that way. This is a 1981 bill, so it's got a solid concrete floor with about 40 mil of polystyrene insulation in it. So it's not very thermally efficient. The walls don't have any insulation in it. Every cavity is completely empty. So you can, you can imagine the heat loss in this place. So probably not a very good BER rating. So we've got this formal sitting room. And as you can probably see, we've got a wall literally just about here, here we go. So this wall here and then this wall here, they don't actually line up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this wall and we're going to basically line it up with the hallway wall. And then we're gonna put in another wall somewhere around here. And that's gonna create a void in between the formal sitting room that we're in now and the room that you can see beyond, which used to be the old dining room. Within that void, we're gonna put a staircase and we're actually gonna hide the staircase. And we're gonna use that to get up onto the second floor. So this is a dormer bungalow, which was actually never converted. So we're actually gonna make some living space upstairs. So we're gonna put two bedrooms and a bathroom, a little bit of storage, and then possibly a cinema room. Um, you know, we've got one little guy who's nearly two years old and we've got another one on the way and myself and my wife like movies and we like to chill out and we like our own space. So we're gonna have a nice cinema room possibly up there. So, so we're gonna hide the staircase. Uh, normally you would have a staircase in the hallway, but as I said, we're gonna try and keep that, that hallway as clear as possible. So it's really, really slick looking and really bright and airy. So that's gonna make this room slightly smaller, but this room is actually quite big anyway. So it's approximately three meters by five meters. So we're gonna probably take about half a meter, maybe 700 mil off the room. Um, and then obviously move that wall back. So that'll give us enough space for a staircase. We're gonna block this all up. So there's only gonna be one entrance into this room. And it's through that doorway there. And we're gonna go for extra height doors as well. So again, keep it nice and airy. And then we're gonna come into the dining room here. So as I said, this void is gonna be closed up. So this dining, this dining room um, seems to have a little bit of work done to it in the past. So as you can see, the floor level is completely different to the kitchen area and has completely broken away. Now I actually haven't touched that with a machine. That is literally just from being walked on. And as you can see, you've got a little bit of that polystyrene in there. So really not very good stuff. It's the type of stuff you get in an Amazon package. So really, really bad. Um, so we're gonna obviously have to take this floor up. We're gonna be taking up all the floors in the house anyway. Um, so that's not really a big deal. Well, it is a lot of work, but it's gonna be worth it in the end. All the radiators have been taken off as well. So you can see I've done quite a lot of work anyway um, to this area um, before shooting this video. So there's a few weeks work on my own here. There's a lot of appliances in the house. So we've got our fridge, we've got a dishwasher, washing machine. They all need to be recycled. There's actually in the shed area that we have, there is another room full of appliances. I think there's like maybe three or four washing machines. So that's going to be fun to get rid of. We have to recycle all of that, um, which isn't going to be too bad. We have a recycling center about 20 minutes away. So this area is actually, as I said, this wall that we have here where our lovely drawings are and my lunch desk. We're going to move this wall back a little bit closer to, to, to where I'm standing. And then um, that's going to make this room slightly smaller. We're then going to make this void a standard doorway and then actually have this as a utility and boot room. That window is going to go. We're going to completely take that out and we're going to put in a nice external doorway there full of glass. 
uh, out into the um, grass area out here. Now that grass area we're actually going to change into like a patio area and we're going to have a little play area in the corner. So um, that's not just going to be unused space and we'll go through that as I walk around the house a little bit later on. So what else do we have here? We have my desk area. We have my little box of tricks with my Ryobi drill and my charger and a back brace and a pair of jeans that I need to change into and my work boots and a bottle of water and a two euro sandwich from Little, which is absolutely fantastic. Big shout out to Little there. I was actually in there this morning grabbing that sandwich and they were doing duct tape and packaging tape. Really good value. I think they were like three euro for the duct tape per roll and then three euro for a pack of three of the packaging tape. And then some snacks to keep me going and a nice big bottle of water. So this actually is a piece of the kitchen that came out here. As you can see, the kitchen island is still sitting in here because the um, water main is actually buried out the front of the house. So we need to actually dig into that to turn the water off. So that's still sitting there because we can't disconnect the water just yet. But this used to have all cabinets. As you can see, there's a really nice family range sitting there. It's not in the best of condition, but I might try and sell that. Um, and as you can see, the wall there, that's where the cabinets were standing. And we had a, a, an extractor fan in this area as well. So behind this wall, there's a boiler house that is external to the house. So you have to access that externally. We're gonna take that out because we're going for heat recovery. So we don't need any boiler, gas, oil, anything like that. And as you can see, we have these areas here, either side of the doorway that was into the dining room. All those cabinets are gone. They were solid wood cabinets. They were an absolute pain to take out. They were so well built. I think they were here from the probably late 80s, early 90s. Um, so very, very heavy units, but we got rid of them. That was first of many. Got our doorway, that's gonna be closed up. And we're gonna make a brand new doorway right here. And that doorway is going to be very close to the width of the hallway. So if I actually walk back out here, it's gonna give you an idea of the layout of the house back in the hallway so very typical ladies the kitchen is completely segregated from the living areas and dining room we're going to make that all nice and open plan uh, if we can so we're going to basically as you walk in the doorway and I sweep around we're going to have a nice big doorway that bath will obviously be gone and um, we're going to have a nice big doorway um, right dead center in the hallway running straight through now, the reason we have that running straight through, you may have already seen, is because right behind that, at the opposite side of the kitchen, there is another doorway. And we're gonna open that up to exactly the same size as the one we're putting in this wall. And then we have a little extension out here. I think this was added on later on. So as you can see, it was like a utility area. So it's not very, you know, it's not very big. It's not a living space. So we're gonna take this down completely. So this is going to be completely gone. And you'll see this from the outside when we go outside. But this is going to be completely and utterly gone. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically run an extension from the end of the house, the full width of this, all the way out 10 meters. So 10 meters is basically halfway up the shadow of the tree as you go out there. So what that's going to make is a full walkway straight through from the front of the house all the way through this area out to the back of the extension. And we're gonna have some nice grass at the back of the extension. That tree will be gone, that edge will be gone, and you'll be able to see the fields and all the mountains at the back as well. So we'll make a really nice and open path. And we're gonna do this double height. So you can see this is our standard ceiling height. I think it's the same ceiling height that's in this area. We're gonna make this an A frame. So we're actually gonna open it up so it'll go up into a V right up. So it'll be really bright and airy. And we'll have some really nice lighting and all that as well. We're gonna have our kitchen in the corner area here. So that'll obviously run right out to the end of the house. And right down the wall here, three meters. And then we're gonna have a double slider um, on this side and also on this side. So we're gonna have three, three point five meter sliders either side, which can be completely opened up. We're gonna have a patio area out here. And we're going to have another patio area out here. So you'll be able to walk right through the extension from one patio area to another. And then right at the end of the extension, we're going to have our living area. So there's a nice, um, nice uh, sofa, TV, some chairs, and then in between the kitchen and that area, we'll have a dining area. So a nice big dining table. So that's the plan. This is how the plan looks. So this is our entrance. As you can see, the full glass 
We're gonna have our formal sitting room here. We're gonna have our stairs. We're gonna have a bathroom underneath the stairs, accessible through the utility area. We're gonna have this utility area, so this is where we're standing right now. And then, as I said, we're gonna have our full hallway, our opening, we're gonna completely open this up, and then we're gonna have our kitchen, dining, and living area, our two sliders, some windows out the back, and this is all gonna be open plan here and run right through, and there's going to be glass in these doors, so it brings the light all the way through into this area. And you've still accessibility, we're gonna have some, you know, an extra fridge in here, uh, we're gonna have our washing machine, dryer, we're gonna have some storage, so it's going to be really, really functional, which is exactly what we want living in a house in Dublin that isn't very functional, which we've tried to renovate, hasn't been too bad. Um, yeah, we're going to try and make it as functional as possible. And also, uh, as I said, we're going to uh, basically create the kitchen area that's currently there. We're going to close up the doorway a little bit there and we're going to basically put a doorway in here. Uh, so this is going to be like a playroom, so we're on the sofa and some storage so the kids can play. So that's basically going to be, this whole area here is going to be the playroom. So it'll run from that line there all the way along. And it'll be slightly bigger than this room here because we're actually going to take out that boiler room and share the space that we gain from that with the bathroom and with this area here. So it'll look really, really well. So that's the living area, playroom, formal sitting room, hallway. Now we've got the bedrooms. So the bedrooms aren't going to change that much. So we're going to have basically this as our spare bedroom. As you can see, all solid walls again. Um, we've got our single pane windows. So not very energy efficient. Very easy to break. Not very good. We're going to keep them the same size. We're going to do them with a really nice passive window. So nice gray. Obviously the outside of the house is going to be rendered. So we're going to make it look as really polished and pristine as possible. So you can see solid block walls and they've built in the, the, uh, the wardrobe. So again, we're going to try and keep to that because it's going to be so expensive to take out these walls and put in new walls. We don't want to do that. There's foundations underneath these. Again, all these floors will come out and we'll be putting in under floor heating. Um, so yeah, a lot of work to do. The only doorway left in the house, and that's my strong room. So that's going to stay there for as long as possible because that's where all my tools are kept. One thing about living down the country, you never know what's going on when you're not here. So um, I want to keep everything secure. We have another bedroom here. So this is going to be basically a, another one of the kids' bedrooms. Again, wardrobes in this area here. Probably have a bed over here somewhere. Again, the, the windows will stay the same size, just brand new windows in this area. And this is the current main bathroom. So as you can see, it doesn't look too much like a bathroom anymore. And that used to have that bath in there, which is cast iron that I took out myself. That took a lot of work. It used to have a shower pan right here, a shower right there. And as you can see, random cabling coming down through the walls. And that's one thing about this house is there's been different work done on it, different isolations of circuits water circuits, electrical circuits, you really don't know what you're getting. You turn off water and there's still water flowing. You turn off the electrics and you don't know if it's turned off or it's turned on again. So you have to be very, very careful. So toilet's still there for obvious reasons. Um, we're slowly taking off the plaster in this area because the plaster didn't make good bind to the walls. So we're taking that off as much as we can. And then we're gonna dry line all these walls with an insulated board. So we're gonna have the insulation both inside and outside the house for obviously thermal properties and for noise and just because it's just that bit easier if we if we put on a thermal board and with some insulation on the back of it it's faster when we plaster it drying and it's just easier to install so we'll get that done um, so we're actually going to take out this whole wall area here is actually going to move back slightly so as my camera comes back into focus and uh, we're going to actually rob that other little bit of space from that boiler room at the back area um, so as you can imagine, you've got a doorway right here. That doorway has a bit of space that runs right from that door all the way to the back of the house. So we're gonna take as much of that space uh, as we can um, to give the playroom and the bathroom a bit more space. But again, we're gonna have a vanity, we're gonna have a bathtub, we're gonna move the toilet, and we're gonna have a nice big shower, probably put the toilet just inside the door and just make it a bit more functional. That window there will move and it will be bigger. So we're gonna make that the same size as the windows in the bedroom so that bit bigger will bring in a bit more light um, and then there's obviously not going to be a tank right outside the window for some reason they did that crazy stuff and we're not going to have that lovely pattern but what can you do 
this area that I use currently for my tools, we're gonna to make that room into our plant room. So we're gonna have our tanks and um, our underfloor heating manifolds, etc., in there, um, and anything else that's needed to go in there. And then we come down to the last guest bedroom. So this again, very similar to the other bedroom, it's just a little bit bigger, a bit more echoey in here because it still has a ceiling, unlike most of the rest of the house. Um, wardrobes again in here, and we're going to put our bed here, and then we're going to have um, you know more sockets so the room's a bit more functional. Um, one thing about this house is we're actually not going to have any switches on the walls, so it's all going to be wireless switching. So we'll have a little remote units that you can go around and control different areas of the house. We did toy with the idea of doing an iPad, we may still do that per room, but that might come later on down the line, you can retrofit that at the end. Um, so yeah, standard room, and then as you can see, we've got this room. So there used to be huge wardrobes all the way along this one wall here. So what we're actually going to do is, we're going to extend this area in the same way as we're going to extend the living area. So this whole wall section is going to come out and we're going to make this room that bit bigger. So we're going to actually have our walkway through, possibly double doors here, and then we have the rest of the room here. So this wall where the window is at, we're gonna take that down and we're gonna build an A-frame extension right out, possibly three to three and a half meters. So that's gonna bring you out probably a little bit further than the line area there of the grass. And this is gonna be, become our master bedroom. So currently, this has an ensuite. So as you can see, not much of that left either. You can see a bit more of the insulation in the ground. So that actually is going to turn into an ensuite for the other bedroom that we've just been in. So we're gonna take this whole doorway out, we're gonna close that up and we're gonna create a, another doorway directly across from it to service the other bedroom. So that means that that guest bedroom is going to be an ensuite. Uh, it's gonna have an ensuite. And then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use this whole area here to have a walk-in wardrobe and then another bathroom. So we're gonna back the bathrooms up together. So we're gonna have a bathroom in this whole area here and then we're gonna have a walk-in wardrobe in this whole area here. And then that will be accessible. When you come through the double doors, you can turn left and go into the walk-in wardrobe and into the bathroom, or you can continue on down the little hallway that we're gonna create. And then you'll come out into our new extension, which is gonna be our bedroom. So a lot of comprehensive work to be done. And as you can see, no ceilings in this area, still have to clean up all the joists. They used small little galvanized nails. So we're gonna to have to uh, clean all of that up. So that's just DIY work for me. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm no DIYer. I just try and get on with things and do them in the safest possible way most of the time and try my hand at these things. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But hopefully I don't make too much of a mess. Now, as you can probably gather, there's a lot of space upstairs. So if I just come right back here, you can see we've got basically our joists running straight across. We've got the A-frame of the house. And then we basically have this little perimeter purling running right along, which creates a, basically a wall area. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use that whole area as much as we can. So if I walk all the way back down here, so just to bear in mind, this house is 180 square meters just on the ground floor. So it's quite a big house as is. Um, Upstairs is going to be approximately 100 square meters, 120. So we've got basically a 300 square meter house and we're going to be doing some extensions out the back and then obviously we're going to do the garage area to the side as well. I'll explain that in a little while. So it's going to be quite a big house. So this is the attic area, this is our plan. So as you can see, this whole area here, the front of the house steps out, which you probably saw, which is where our window area is in the hallway. So above that area, we're going above the hallway. So the hallway would run basically along here. We're going to create a cinema room and we're going to have some storage area here. This is our stairs that's going to run between the formal sitting room and the utility room that I'm currently in. We're going to bring that up. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this area to give us plenty of light. So as you can probably see, that is that area right there. So you can see there's plenty of light coming in there currently. Um, so we're going to have a landing in that area. And we're gonna use this area as storage. So probably use a little bit of the eave there as well. And then this area right above us here, right above the, the, the formal sitting room. And then also above the hallway. You can see it's quite a large space. 
So we're going to use that for a cinema room. Now, that may not happen straight away, but that's the plan. So that's going to be our cinema room. And then we're going to have our hallway. So our hallway is an interesting shape, and I'll explain why. So you're going to have to walk up and get plenty of light. We're going to use the light from this window here to give us light into this hallway area here. We're then going to have in the roof space, this is the back of the house. We're going to have a V-Lux window here. And that's going to give us light down this area here. And then we're going to have to put a mirror somewhere around this area, so on one of these walls, to possibly give us a little bit of a bounce of light into this area. Now the reason for that is, this is the front of the house. Ideally we would have portholes or V-Lux windows in this area here, but we can't do it because we would need to go and get planning permission and it just wouldn't really look right at the front of the house. So we're going to try and bounce the light around as much as we can, as well as using obviously some really nice down lights as well, which are all again wirelessly controlled and we're going to use these as PIRs. So if you walk into this area, up the stairs and into the landing, all of these lights will turn on automatically in dark light. And if you walk out of one of the bedrooms that's up here, they'll all turn on for you as well. So you'll be able to find your way. So you're just going to have normal daylight during the day. And then you're obviously going to have your down lights giving you artificial light um, in the evening time and in the night time. So then what we're going to do is we're going to create another bedroom here and a bedroom right at the end of the house. So that's where we just came from. This is going to be above the uh, master bedroom and our guest suite where our bathroom is in the center we're going to have another window here which is already there and that's going to give plenty of light and that's going to be quite a big bedroom as well and then we're going to do a wc right between these two bedrooms and the reason the wc is there is because that is right above where the current main bathroom is so we can bring all of our services up in this area and bring them up into this bathroom area here and then that would be able to give a bathroom for both of those bedrooms. So as you can see, we've kind of thought about it as logically as we possibly can to make it as easy as we can, make it as cost efficient as we can. So, you know, there's a lot of work to be done here. So that's the plan. So there we go. So our extensions out the back and at the front of the house here. So very little changing, walk-in wardrobe, master bedroom ensuite and then our master bedroom we're going to have obviously the a-frame here so plenty of height and we're going to have some velux windows in here we're also going to have some velux windows in this open plan area here we're hoping to use the integra velux windows one of our biggest ones which is either a uk 08 or a uk 10 so they're big big velux windows and they're all going to be electronically controlled and we're tying up whether to use solar or to use obviously main supply um but we'll, we'll figure that out it all comes down to cost at the end of the day so we're hoping by the end of the extensions and the conversion to the attic area that we're left with a house that is going to be you know uh we're going 380 we're going to be talking sorry 280 we're going to be talking maybe 350 square meters so it's going to be quite a substantial house but you know all well thought out and plenty of room for guests if they want to come along so that's the interior space. So let me know what you think, comment below. If you have any ideas, any changes you would make from your own experiences or just any thoughts that you have, make sure you like and subscribe to our page as well. And um, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go outside and actually have a look at the uh, whole area around the house, and uh, what's already been done and what the plan is with that area. And then we're also gonna have a look at the ancillary building that we have and exactly what our plans are with that.